Ready to say ciao? Mm. Today, uh, we're transporting you straight to the heart of Rome. You've booked those flights, you've got your guidebook, but Rome can be a lot to take in. So we're offering a deep dive into a guide highlighting the top 12 landmarks. We'll give you the most fascinating nuggets so you can make the most of your first Roman adventure. What's amazing about Rome is that it's not just about seeing those famous places, it's really like stepping through time. Every corner that you turn, you come face to face with ancient wonders, Renaissance masterpieces, bustling piazzas that have seen centuries of life unfold. It's a truly layered experience. Oh, let's start with a landmark that probably needs no introduction. The Colosseum. You've seen it in movies, you've heard the stories, but being there in person is just mind-blowing. Imagine this, mm. 65,000 screaming spectators, gladiators battling for glory, wild animals roaring. It's not just about the spectacle, though. The Colosseum was a powerful symbol of Roman power and control. Imagine the engineering genius it took to build such a massive structure without modern technology and how it stood as a testament to Roman dominance for centuries. Speaking of architectural marvels, mm. we can't forget the Pantheon. You walk in and you're immediately struck by this massive dome, perfectly preserved. It's like a whisper of ancient Roman ingenuity echoing through the centuries. It's amazing how its original purpose is still a mystery, but the fact that it was later consecrated as a church speaks to its enduring power and beauty. And here's a bonus tip for your trip. Entry to the Pantheon is free. Free history and architectural brilliance. Sign me up. Let's switch gears to a place where dreams meet reality the Trevi Fountain. You can't visit Rome without tossing a coin over your shoulder into those sparkling waters, right? It's a tradition that captures the romanticism of Rome. The Trevi Fountain is a masterpiece of Baroque art, a dramatic scene sculpted in stone with Neptune, the god of the sea, commanding attention. It's no wonder it's one of the most photographed fountains in the world. And speaking of must-sees, we have to talk about Vatican City. Mm -hmm. St. Peter's Basilica is truly awe-inspiring. I remember the first time I stepped inside, I was speechless. The sheer grandeur the intricate details, the spiritual weight of it all. It's the heart of the Catholic Church, and it's filled with masterpieces. You've got papal tombs, Bernini's incredible bronze baldachin, and of course Michelangelo's Pieta, a sculpture so emotionally charged it's hard to look away. Just a heads up though, be prepared for some long lines. But trust me, it's worth the wait. And while you're in Vatican City, don't miss the Vatican Museums and the Sistine Chapel. Imagine walking through 54 galleries packed with Roman artifacts, Renaissance masterpieces, and tapestries so intricate it's hard to believe they were made by human hands. And then you enter the Sistine Chapel. It's like stepping into a Michelangelo painting. You're surrounded by his frescoes. From the iconic creation of Adam to the Last Judgment, it's a moment you won't soon forget. Pro tip, get skip the line tickets for both St. Peter's and the Vatican Museums. Trust me, your feet will thank you. Mm. Now let's step back in time to the very heart of ancient Rome the Roman Forum, and Palatine Hill. Close your eyes for a moment. Imagine yourself walking among the ruins of temples, senate buildings, and bustling marketplaces. This was the center of Roman life, where laws were made, emperors strutted, everyday Romans went about their business, its history brought to life. And looming over the Forum is Palatine Hill, where the emperors and wealthy Romans built their lavish villas. Just standing there, looking out over the ruins, you can almost feel the echoes of their power and influence. It's a view that's both breathtaking and thought-provoking. Okay, let's take a break from ancient history for a moment and talk about a place that's pure Roman charm, Piazza Navona. This isn't your typical square. It's got a unique, elongated shape. That hints that it's past as a Roman stadium. And it's filled with amazing art and architecture. You've got Bernini's masterpiece, the Fountain of the Four Rivers, representing the Nile, the Ganges, the Danube, and the Rio de la Plata, each one so intricately carved you could spend hours just admiring the details. And then there's the obelisk, a reminder of Rome's connection to ancient Egypt, standing tall in the center of it all. Piazza Navona is the place to soak up the atmosphere, grab a gelato, and watch the world go by. And speaking of iconic spots, we can't forget the Spanish steps. Imagine yourself perched on those famous 135 steps leading up to the Trinita de Monte Church. People watching, soaking up the sun. It's a Roman ritual. And at the bottom of the Spanish steps, you'll find the Piazza di Spagna with a beautiful fountain designed by Pietro Bernini, the father of the more famous John Lorenzo Bernini. It's a reminder that art and history are intertwined in every corner of Rome. You know, one thing that often surprises first-time visitors to Rome is how much green space there is. When you think of Rome, you think ancient ruins and bustling city streets. 
But there are these oases of peace and tranquility right in the heart of it all, like the Galleria and Villa Borghese. Right. It's like stepping into a Renaissance fairy tale. This sprawling park was once the estate of Cardinal Scipione Borghese, a man with impeccable taste in art. And he transformed his villa into a gallery, showcasing his incredible collection. And what a collection it is. You'll find masterpieces by Caravaggio, Bernini, Rubens, and even a painting by Leonardo da Vinci. It's a must-see for any art lover. But even if you're not a huge art buff, the park itself is worth a visit. You can wander through the gardens, rent a bike, or take a relaxing boat ride on the lake. It's the perfect place to escape the city buzz and recharge before your next adventure. Speaking of hidden gems, let's venture off the beaten path a bit. Have you ever heard of the Basilica di Santa Maria Maggiore? Oh, it's one of those places that often gets overlooked, but it's truly a hidden treasure. It's one of the four papal basilicas in Rome, and it's absolutely stunning. You've got these beautiful mosaics, a ceiling that glitters with gold, and an atmosphere of serenity that's hard to find in the bustling city center. What I find fascinating about Santa Maria Maggiore is the story behind it. Legend has it that the Virgin Mary appeared to Pope Liberius in a dream, instructing him to build a church where snow fell the next day. And guess what? Snow fell on the Esquiline Hill in August, and that's where the Basilica stands today. It's a reminder that Rome is a city steeped in legends and miracles. And speaking of atmosphere, let's talk about Trastevere. If you want to experience the true heart and soul of Rome, this is the place to be. Trastevere is like stepping back in time. You've got cobbled streets, charming medieval houses draped in ivy, and a vibrant energy that's contagious. It's the perfect place to get lost. Explore and discover hidden courtyards and trattorias. In the evening, Trastevere really comes alive. The restaurants fill up with locals and tourists alike. The streets are buzzing with conversation and laughter, and there's a palpable sense of community that's hard to resist. It's the perfect place to enjoy a leisurely dinner, savor some authentic Roman cuisine, and soak up the atmosphere. Now we've covered a lot of ground, but there's one more landmark we can't leave out. Castel San Angelo, the guardian of the city. Castel San Angelo has this fascinating history. It was originally built as a mausoleum for the Roman Emperor Hadrian. Then it became a fortress, a papal residence, even a prison. It's a building that's seen it all. And it's connected to the Vatican by a secret passageway, which just adds to his mystique. But perhaps the most striking feature is the bronze statue of the Archangel Michael, standing atop the castle, sword in hand. That statue has a powerful story behind it. It's said that during a plague in 590 AD, Pope Gregory, I saw a vision of the Archangel Michael sheathing his sword, signifying the end of the plague. That vision led to the building of the statue, and ever since Castel San Angelo has stood as a symbol of protection for the city. You know, as we're talking about all these landmarks, I'm realizing that what makes Rome so special is how each place has a story to tell. It's not just about the architecture or the art. Mm -hmm. It's about the layers of history, the legends, the lives that have unfolded within those walls. Exactly. Rome is a city that invites you to connect with the past, to imagine the people who walked those streets centuries ago, to feel the weight of history all around you. And for a first-time visitor, it can be a bit overwhelming. But that's also part of the magic. Rome is a city that unfolds slowly, revealing its secrets bit by bit. So as you plan your trip, think about what kind of stories you want to uncover. Are you drawn to the grandeur of the Roman Empire, the spiritual weight of the Vatican, or the charming bohemian atmosphere of Trastevere? Whatever you're looking for, Rome has a story waiting to be told. Now let's get practical for a moment. We've talked about the must-sees, but navigating a new city, especially one as historically rich and sprawling as Rome, can be daunting. Absolutely. You don't want to be so focused on ticking off landmarks that you miss the real magic of the city. Right. So first things first, comfortable shoes are essential. You'll be doing a lot of walking. So invest in some good footwear that can handle cobblestone streets and long days of exploring. And don't underestimate the Roman sun, especially in the summer. Yeah. Sunscreen, a hat, sunglasses, those are your best friends. Another tip, plan your visit strategically. Rome is a popular destination, and some attractions like St. Peter's Basilica and the Colosseum attract huge crowds especially during peak season. Consider visiting early in the morning or later in the afternoon to avoid the longest lines. And if your budget allows, skip the line tickets are a lifesaver. They might cost a little extra, but trust me, they're worth it when you see the length of those lines. You'll save yourself hours of waiting. Also remember that many attractions have specific closing days or restricted hours, so check those details online in advance to avoid disappointment. It's good to have a plan, 
But also, don't be afraid to just wander. Rome is a city that rewards curiosity. You might stumble upon a hidden courtyard, a charming cafe, or a breathtaking view that's not in any guidebook. Those are often the most memorable moments, so embrace the unexpected, get lost in the back streets, and let Rome surprise you. Now let's talk about something that's essential to any Roman experience, mm. the food. From classic pasta dishes to mouth-watering pizzas, there's something for every palate, and of course, the gelato. Oh, the gelato. Rome is a foodie paradise, but here's a tip. Venture beyond the main tourist areas. You'll often find the best trattorias and pizzerias tucked away in quieter neighborhoods. Ask the locals for recommendations. They know the hidden gems. Don't be afraid to try something new. Order the daily special. And savor every bite. And don't forget about the coffee. Italians take their coffee seriously. And you'll find a cafe on practically every corner. But remember, ordering a latte in Italy will get you a glass of milk. If you want coffee with milk, ask for a cafe latte. Right. Little things like that can really enhance your experience. Speaking of enhancing your experience, learning a few basic Italian phrases can go a long way. Buongiorno, grazie, per favore. Those simple phrases will make you feel more connected to the culture and show respect to the locals. Absolutely. It's amazing how a few words can open doors and create connections. Now, as we wrap up our Roman adventure, I want to emphasize something important. Rome is a city that's best experienced at your own pace. Don't try to cram everything in, pick a few must-sees, savor the moments, get lost in the back streets, and just soak up the atmosphere. It's about quality over quantity. Instead of rushing from one landmark to the next, take the time to truly appreciate what you're seeing. Sit in a piazza, enjoy a gelato, watch the people go by, and let Rome work its magic on you. I think that's the best advice we can give any first-time visitor to Rome. Embrace the chaos, the beauty, the history, and the unexpected. You won't be disappointed. And remember, Rome is a city that stays with you long after you've left. It's a place that sparks your imagination, challenges your perspectives, and leaves you with a sense of wonder that's hard to describe. So as you prepare for your Roman adventure, remember to pack your curiosity, your sense of adventure, and most importantly, an open heart. Rome is waiting to welcome you. And until next time, happy travels.